Um, good afternoon. Uh, I, I'm going to apologize to the translator and to you guys because I talk fast. I'm American, but I live in the UK, but I've just been, been to see my family. <laughs> uh, so my accent's a little bit worse than it usually is. And my family does stupid stuff like this. If I can do it. Yes, we are that type of family. So just to warn you how this presentation is going to go. I flew in from the States, I think, Tuesday, and I've been in London, and I flew in last night at 1 a.m. So excuse the voice, but we'll get through this. And I will be quick. I created something called Culture Themes. Has anybody heard of Culture Themes? On, yeah, I know, not, not a lot, but it's all good. Um, it was, I don't work in a museum. I don't particularly like museums or theater, um, but I want to, I really do want to. Um, and about five, six years ago in the UK, there was a lot of budget cuts and a lot of museums were complaining online about their budget cuts. And I was like, are you guys serious? You want me to go to your museum and you're complaining about cuts? Like that, you're, you have long faces already. Like that's not gonna be fun for me. So once a month I do a hashtag. I never really know what the hashtags are going to be or what they're gonna look like or if they're going to be popular. And to be quite honest, I don't care about trending. I don't care about it being popular. I care about the public being able to engage with museums and collections and theaters and libraries. Let's go for it all. Um, have you heard of Museum Selfie Day? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I am so sorry. I, this was actually started in a really funny way. It was the word of the year, and I have a teenager, and I thought, all right, once something's popular, the kids stop doing it. So this was in December. Oxford Dictionary said it was the word of the year. So I said, fine, we'll, we'll do a museum selfie day in January as nobody will ever use selfie again. And I was so wrong. <laughs> I, it just exploded, and all I put was that. I gave no direction. I didn't say what a selfie was. I didn't tell people how to take a selfie. I didn't say it had to be on that day. I didn't say it had to be in a museum. I don't give rules and regulations because I break them. So who am I to tell people what to do? But then this happened. And it was really, really fun. It was, it was completely unexpected. Um, but everybody seemed to get involved, and it wasn't scheduled post. It wasn't, it wasn't a thing where museums were like, okay, this is a campaign that we're going to get involved in. On that day, the first year it ran, I forced museums to get involved, even though they did not want to. And a lot of them still hate me to this day for that. I run all my campaigns on a Wednesday, because Wednesday at the end of the month is the most hardest day to get the public engaged, which is something I found out through my through my research, which is not research, it's just observation. Um, and I found that, you know, let's do it on Wednesday. And then museums are contacting me going, well, we're closed on a Wednesday. Well, that's not my fault. <laughs> I didn't know this was going to be international. I didn't know this was going to be world trending. I didn't know it was going to be as popular as it was. So then they said, are you going to do it the next year? And I was like, yeah, I'll do it the next year. But I'm not sure people are going to get involved because they kind of already know about it. That's Rocky. <laughs> He's from Philadelphia. That's where I'm from. So that was really cool. But also, the thing was, is I'm just going to skip the next one. The directors started getting involved because directors were trying to show their cool side of themselves um, and showing their fun side. And there was a lot of hate. There was a lot of people going, eh, you know, that that particular thing, the, the one on the bottom right, that's not a selfie. Oh come on! They share content. It, you know, it was great. They used the hashtag. That that's that to me was all that it was about, and how people interpreted it was completely up to them. And I don't care about numbers, but apparently this is impressive. I still don't know what it means to this day, because I don't have to. I don't get funding. I don't have somebody who's paying me for this stuff, so I don't have to worry about these numbers. But people were so impressed that they actually sent that information to me. Um, I'd much rather they have sent me a, uh, a cake, but, you know, they send me files. But culture themes is really diverse. We also do Ask a Courier Day, and when I say we, it is me. 
right? But I can't take credit for this stuff because it's the museums and the public who actually do this stuff. I'm not, I hardly ever ask a curator a question on the day because I'm too busy retweeting. Um, but people love to be able to interact with a staff and that could be, that could be conservationists, that could be your archeological people, it could be your librarian, it could be anything. On Ask a Curator Day, again, it just explodes and people do what they want to do. I think this is my seventh year doing it. I was going to kill it off and then I was told that if I killed it off, they would kill me. So we'll be running again in January. Uh, and that seems to be a, a thing for January. <clears throat> but I also want to throw some other things out there. That top right one was a day I did, because I, I, you run out of hashtags when you're looking for something once a month. You totally run out of things to, to talk about. And I was doing laundry. So I, I cheekily, funnily said, let's run Museum Socks Day. And um, it went trending because people were sharing their socks that they were wearing in museums, or they were wearing socks in their collection, or they were wearing socks that could have been involved in a collection. Uh, again, not something that I ever thought would ever happen, but it does. And my favorite topic, which I, I'm not allowed to run too often, is the bottom right hand one is a cake. I did museum cake day and museums did stuff like that, like where the staff actually create a cake off their collection. I just wanted pictures of people eating cake in a museum. Um, and then they showed me them eating that afterwards, which killed me, because like, you don't do that. That's, that's too perfect. Um, and then I, I don't know if you guys saw this just recently, but on Ask a Curator Day this past January, um, Hilariously, the Science Museum and Natural History Museum contacted me either the morning of or the night before and said, hey, just want to let you know, we didn't get a lot of questions. We, we've asked people, so you know, maybe it is dying. And I was just like, look, just, you know, if anybody's there on the day and asks you a question, just answer it. Just, just be there. Stop being so weird about it. Because uh, national museums seem to schedule so much stuff, so much post out there, they don't actually interact with their public anymore. And I keep yelling about this, and I'll keep yelling about it. But on this day, this conversation happened. And then on the next day, the conversation was still happening. And it made the news, because it was, <clears throat> it was pretty impressive to see that museums are getting involved in a certain, <laughs> in a, I'll give you time to read that if you can, and I apologize, because I didn't translate it. Um, but, then it but then Australia got involved. <laughs> And it just kept going and going and going. But what was fun about it was they were actually showing their personality. They were showing that they are humans. They were showing that there is a, there is a person behind what we're, we are seeing. Um, and I, I did not see all of that. I only found out from this whole conversation, I found out from the news when they contacted me for a quote. And I said, I can't quote because I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, but it, it is showing that it's not about scheduled posts, it's not about, it's about interaction, it's about catching somebody and just saying, hey, did you enjoy your visit? Another initiative that I start, which is, um, which I also still find hilarious, is Love Theater Day. And this started because I ran, I ran an event, what was it? I ran probably Ask a Curator Day or something. And the Guardian was going to, the Guardian newspaper was going to write about it. The guy didn't. I contacted him. I was like, dude, you told me you're going to write a piece. You didn't. I told other people I'm not going to talk to them because I'm talking to you. It's like, oh, we just got this like embargoed email saying that um, theaters are going to be getting cut. They're, all their funding in London is going to be getting cut and in England. I don't know why the words came out, but then I was just like, okay, we'll run Love Theater Day. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly I, was, I contacted Twitter and I was just like, we're going to do this event, Let, you know, let's kind of push out theaters for, for a day. And if you can see, I spelled theater the British way. I am not British, so I spent the whole day using the tag the American way, which was not exactly the most intelligent thing of me. Um, but people love theater, just like they love museums and they love libraries. But we never, ever give them the chance to say why. In a, in a, in a non-creepy way. And when I say that, I mean, we asked them why they visited a museum. We asked them for V back, but 
it's, it's different when it's just a normal conversation that you're having with somebody as you pass by, as opposed to having to fill out a form. Again, weirdly, love theater day went world trending. I still don't know why. Um, and this, that, that is actually from this past year, because this is our third year running it. Um, people love it. They just love to, to be able to say why they love theaters. And it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those things where I always go back to this slide about we need to listen to what our public wants. And that does not mean talking to everybody. That means talking to the people who are actually coming in. And I apologize, it's probably me. Um, we need to understand what they're actually saying. I think as a sector, we think that we're listening and we interpret what we think they're saying, but we're not actually listening to what they're saying. We're understanding and interpreting it as they're saying it. But the last part about acting, we, we do a lot of research in this sector. We do a lot of forms, we do a lot of feedback, but nobody really acts on it. And I don't know if that's uh, because there's always, wh who's the person to take the action? You, you know, nobody wants to lose their job by, by doing that. Um, but I'm in a position where I don't work for anybody, so they can't fire me. It's a great, it's a great issue. From listening to people, I did 52 museums. Has anybody heard of 52 museums? <laughs> um, so 52 museums, <clears throat> the, the concept was, actually I'm just gonna go forward, so if you wanna read, you can. But the concept was dead simple. I was having dinner with your friend, and he's a quilter. And he said, oh, I started this Instagram, uh, Instagram account called 52 uh, Quilters, and once a week a quilter takes over the account. I said, oh, that's good. I'm like, well, why aren't museums doing that? Why can't museums do that? So I, I just went to Instagram, the account was there, grabbed it, <laughs> uh, and then just did a shout out on social media and said, hey, I'm doing this project, silly project again. Um, who wants to take over? And the, the awkward thing was, is museums normally have their own Instagram account. <laughs> so the fact that I'm telling them that they now have to take over another one, didn't go over too well at first, but, but they signed up. And I now have, I think about 400 on the waiting list um, to take part. And basically, once a week, a museum takes over the account, shares what they can share. My email to them is, don't put content on this account that you're gonna do on your own account. Play with it, have fun, find out what works, find out what doesn't work. You will not get in trouble by me. I will not fire you. Your boss will not fire you because it has a global interest. I, other things that I ask them to do is um, post six to seven times a day, which is quite a lot for museums to come up with that content. But it's an international account. You have to deal with the different time zones if you want people to recognize you internationally. Um, and that's something that we don't, we don't always do. Um, when I was doing this presentation, I found out there was an article about 52 museums in The Guardian at some point. Who knew? Um, because people actually really love it. And I will share the slides and the link is on to that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, big nationals have taken over, but my favorite ones are the small and medium museums because they're the most passionate. They have the most to share. Um, small and medium museums are great with storytelling. They have a lot to say. They just, they, and on a platform like this where they won't get fired, they want to say it. Often I'm asked about different platforms and which one you should work on. A new one just came out. Has anybody heard of this new one? Oh, no, I got to look it up. It's so new. Vermo, is it? V E M O? Hold on. Yeah, you guys heard of this one? I, you know, I, I grab my name. I'm still like, why am I there? Um, but you know, you grab the name because you never know. T this now nowadays, blogging is still really big. Newsletters are actually on on their up and up. People are actually reading newsletters again, and they love podcasts. So if that's ever an option for you guys, d do that also. I. I'm usually a fan of Twitter, but I do have to be critically honest with myself and say I think that's dying a bit at this point. Um, I think it's more uh, marketers, and I apologize for any marketers in the room, but um, I think it's more about marketing rather than being social, and people are forgetting that social aspect. And of course, right now, the two hot ones are gonna be Facebook and Instagram, although Facebook, 
uh, Facebook and Instagram's algorithms just changed about two weeks ago, so that's, uh, I haven't been able to, to analyze that too, too, too much, but um, I think the public is still using Facebook and Instagram, and that's internationally. Twitter's not used internationally, and I have to ha uh, admit to that one. But Instagram is the hot one right now. I would say Snapchat, but even my daughter, who's 15, is like bored with Snapchat at this point, because they've been doing it for so long. Um, and they don't like when our sector gets involved in Snapchat. They find that really awkward. But each of them has their own audience, and it just goes back to your ownership of finding out who your audience actually is, what they are actually using. And a great way to do that is to just throw hashtags on an exhibition and see what platform gets the most feedback from you. So if you say, you know, use this hashtag on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and then you can analyze it uh, afterwards and find out which, how many people actually post it on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. It's also really good to have a hashtag for exhibitions um, because that tells people that you want them to share because people often don't know if they're allowed to. It's that, it's that awkwardness of the behavior of how you act in a museum is still not known to everybody, although we, we, we think it is, but it's not. Um, can I did not do that? I got to admit, I hate scheduled posts. Um, but I, I understand that it's a necessity for a lot of museums, especially national museums. But the things that I always say to people is check your trends during that day. So there's a lot of scheduled posts that go out there. And then on the day there's a national disaster or something happens politically or something happens, you know, there's a, God forbid, there's a train crash or something like that. And your post is about riding the train that day. You know, you, you need to check on these things. Um, Does a lot of, do you guys schedule post a lot? Is that something that you guys, yeah, yeah, just be careful. I mean, I know it needs to be done, but, all, but while you're scheduling, you can have your schedule stuff, but also be, be social also. So as you're walking to your car, just, you know, if somebody says, hey, I had a great visit at this museum today, just respond back on, did you have a nice day? You don't care, you don't have to care, but it's just that reaching out to that person to, to make sure that you're using it social. One of my favorite, I got a couple of favorite museums, which I shouldn't do, it's like having kids. Um, Linda Spurtle from the Birmingham Museum in England, she works most of her time, she does a lot of stuff during the day, but at night is when she does most of her social media, because that's when the public are responding, going, I, had, I visited today, or I had a great trip, or I'm planning on going to uh, Birmingham Museums tomorrow, what exhibitions are on. So from about seven to nine at night, as she's making dinner and as she's doing other stuff, she is actually just on social media and responding to people. Not everybody, she catches whoever she can get. But um, I asked her for a quote on scheduling because she, she's anti-schedule also, and that was her quote, which I thought was, was great. Because um, it is sort of like, when you're, schedule, when you're scheduling stuff out, who are you talking to? You're, you're hoping through your research that you hit the right time zones and you hit the right uh, uh, information, but you, you don't always. Um, a little bit about trends, which I kind of already went over, but trends are actually really important, and that's, not, that's everything outside of the sector is what I'm talking about. Luckily, because I have absolutely zero patience, I can't just stick with one sector, so I work with publishing, I work with theaters, I work with a lot of different tech companies and stuff like that. So I'm always listening to what they're saying and what they're doing. And one of the, the big things that I've noticed within the last year or two is the shift of how museums are perceived and what the public actually wants. So before museums existed for academia and research and um, a certain type of people going in there to be able to study objects and to be able to learn more about it. You know what? We got these now. We got Google. We don't really need to be in a museum to access this stuff because it's all out there. So the shift needs to be more emotive because we want to feel something. We know when we watch Netflix or when we are gonna go see a movie or pay money to go to um, an amusement park, 
we are paying for that experience. We're paying for those emotions that we're going to get. And it could be scary. It could be a good, good emotion. We, we don't know. But museums, we really don't know, and we're not going to pay for an unknown like that. So it's more about the storytelling rather than academia. So my example usually is our labels. Our labels used to be like, you know, art on, I don't know, acrylic on wood, 1921, and here's the artist's names, and the catalog number or the research number, which meant nothing to the public. Now we're getting more into the storytelling about why that curator collecting it. Why is it still in your... Um, collection, what does it matter to you? Don't get me wrong, museums like that one on the left are still really awesome to go and visit. They, they are absolutely, but it's only after you know museums are still for you. And this is talking from a non-museum person, non person. The other trends, and I hope you guys understand what I'm saying here, is on Facebook, We've all seen little short videos of fashion or music or food videos or, or something. And, it, and I would say yeah, eight out of 10 of us have stopped and actually watched a whole video. I, I always watch the food videos and I don't cook, which is hilarious, um, because they make it look so easy. And we're not tapping into those things. And that is what young people are, are actually looking at these days, that's what, they're, that's what they are doing on Instagram. They're looking at little short videos. They're going on to YouTube to watch little short videos. Not that they're actually doing anything. As my, I mean, my daughter lays in bed more than anything, but you know, going by her social media, she should be a fashion queen and cook dinner every night, and she doesn't. But the videos are really interesting. There's little snapshots of what is available, and we don't do that enough. We're, we're not, but that is the trend right now is to have little short videos and we're not doing that for them. Um, and we have to stop sort of listening to everybody. And in that, this article was also sent to me and the, the link is in, in the file for, uh, for when it's uploaded. But Instagram is not killing art. It's the way we feel and how the museum and art galleries are making us feel that's killing art. And we have to be aware of that. Um, if I want to take a picture, because I want to look at it later, or I want to share it, or I want to do certain things, th that's my prerogative. Don't tell me how to be. Don't tell me what to do. I'm not spitting Diet Coke on your painting. I'm not running around with a knife. I just want to take a picture. Let me. Without flash. I'll take the flash off. It's all, it's that, that's cool. I'll do that. Um, but we kind of judge people for doing that. and. Um, I don't think any other sector judges people. You look at publishing, you look at, you look at the tech, we, we try not to judge people, we try to relate to them. Uh, but within our sector, and yes, it is probably this author just trying to make a name for himself, but it doesn't bode well when, when we hear about things like this. Also for social media, it's really important that you follow people to learn about different things that are going on in the world, and that's internationally. Um, follow the hashtags, follow the people, engage with them. So make sure that you're talking to them, finding out what, what's going on. A lot of people are, I mean, every morning I say good morning to people, and every night I try to say good night if, if, if I can. Um, and that gets dialogue going. And I always say this, I'm completely honest, I don't really care how every one of my followers are doing, but for the 10 that respond, I might have like a 15 minute conversation with them. And then I go off and I do my work and I come back and you know, I, I know that they're there. And it goes back to that listening, understanding and acting. Because I, I can't be sitting t telling people to be social if I'm not social myself. And I think the person themselves needs to be so uh, so social. I'm gonna try to go a little bit faster. Um, going back to culture things, but I just wanna talk about communities and how important communities are. And that's either online or offline. Um, culture themes started off with just myself, but now I have a community, international community of museums and people who every month want to get involved in it or want to help promote it or help, want to help engage with it. Uh, and that's not a physical thing, that's an online thing. Ask a Curator is the same way. We have a group of people that always want to get involved in it, and because like I said, I, I almost gave up on it at one point because I just thought, you know, it's a, it's a dying duck and we should, we should give up on it. Um, and then I, 
a great example is the Science Museum in London uh, has started doing uh, autism awareness and autism uh, programs because a mom who was doing her MA has two kids with autism and said, I really want to attend museums, but I can't because my children can't handle the loud machinery in the Science Museum. And from that, they got a little bit of funding and now they do early days. I think it's once a month now at this point. It's been running for about two, three years. But that was just listening to that one person and going, you're not the only one who's saying that, but you're the only one who actually said it to us. So let's, let's work on that. Um, I was lucky enough to visit the Garage Museum in, in I think that's Moscow in Russia. Um, and they found that they had, uh, near them was a community of visually impaired people. So they changed their whole scope for a year and worked with the visually impaired to do exhibitions that, they, that was with them. From doing that and that community then going out and with the Science Museum, the autism community going out and spreading the word about it, they got new followers and they got new people actually visiting the museum. So there was a foot flow number that, that, that went up, which makes a difference. But it's just, you know, what, is, what, do, what are your community needs? What, what do they actually want? What do your, what are your visitors, visitors want? But more importantly, what do your non-visitors want? And how can you ch change that from a non-visitor to a visitor? And how can you implement that? And again, that goes back to listening to them, but not just relying on VBAC forms, because they're never, ever going to be honest on VBAC forms. Best way to get VBAC off of people is to take them to a pub. <laughs> and even better if you buy. Um, a little bit about live stream. Does that, who here does live stream? Anybody do live stream? Okay, a few people, all right. It's a funny one, because it kind of crept up on us a couple years ago with Periscope. Um, actually, there was Meerkat before that, and then Periscope. And more and more museums and art galleries and theaters are, are trying to do live stream, which is really, really good. But um, if the content is bad, whether it's live or a photo or in a vlog, it's still going to be bad. So make sure you got the right content to be sharing. That's why I put the, uh, I don't know, I, I hope it translates, you can't put lipstick on a pig because it's still a pig. So you, got, you got to do what you got to do. Now I got to see, I'm going to try, no, it's not on that one. I'll do it on the next one. Um, Live stream is very difficult for museums and art galleries because it really should be done out of hours also because that's when people are going to watch. People can't work watch when they're at work. So if you're doing live stream at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. and people are working, they're not going to be able to sit there for like 20, 25 minutes watching your live stream. So just be cautious about that when, you're, when you are doing it. There's a lot of um, information. Again, I'm conscious about the time, and I'm sure you guys are tired after two days of listening to people. I'll share all these, but basically get a person to do the live stream who's talking in front, who actually has a personality. People do want to hear from curators, but not all curators are great translators into the public realm. <laughs> And you just need to be cautious about that. They might be great on Twitter, and they might be great on a, on a blog, but their personality needs to be behind that also. Uh, trying to go forward. Uh, I just wanted to throw out a really great example, and I'm hoping this one works. I got way too many things up right now. Uh, no sound? Anyway, this is Rom. This is a Royal Ontario Museum in Canada. This is Ryan Dodge, who is talking. Uh, and he does great stuff there with the live stream. And now they do like once a week or once a month or, uh, uh, type scenarios. But this one was one of their best ones. And it was just him being completely real. He can't, he, there was no script as such. He just did what he needed to say. He fumbled up on it. It didn't matter, it's live. Can't take two, got, you, know, you gotta go with it. But I'm hoping I can show you the actual guy. The guy is literally opening up an envelope. <laughs> Kink. No, I tried that. Yeah, it's not letting. 
it's fine. I, this, I, I could share this afterwards, but literally they filmed this guy opening an envelope and 7.9 thousand followers viewed it. <laughs> but he talked about it. He was saying why he was excited. He was saying, I believe he got it like on eBay or something. And he was, he was describing like what it was like. And he was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna peel this back because that's what it said. It said to peel it back. And you're sitting there going, you didn't have to say that. You could have just showed us. But um, they now schedule once a week, some, some fun things. So they'll do like Fossil Friday or they'll do Wednesday, Wednesday something whimsical, uh, something else. But because they're consistent with it, it's really good for them at this point. Getty Museum is another great example. Getty Museum in LA, um, they, they do lots of uh, live streaming. It, it does t seem to be getting more professional at this point where people have their tripods and they, ha they have to have a good mic, you have to have certain things around with it. Uh, but you can also just, if something's happening outside of your building or within your building, it's really exciting. There's like a, there's a, there's a surprise person that comes in. You can live stream and people are completely content with it being shaky. I mean, we're, we're not stupid. We know that you, you were just as surprised as everybody else. Let's see, watch the volume go on now. I don't know where I'm at at this point, but I, the, you know what, I'm gonna, I'll stop with that. I'm gonna ask for questions, because I know I've been talking forever. I, that's my motto. Uh, I come from a big family, so you learn just to do stuff, then get in trouble afterwards, or blame your sibling, that good one. Um, but yeah, it's, it, is easy, it is always easier to ask forgiveness, especially when you're passionate about it and you're doing whatever you're doing and you're doing it with the, your heart in the right place and it's for the good of the museum or the art gallery. There's not many people who are going to complain or, or, or yell at you afterwards. They, they might ask you why you did it and how, the, how you can implement it. But we all know when you ask to do something in a museum, museum time is incredibly slow. It is so slow. So sometimes it's just a matter of doing it and then finding out whether you should have done it or not. That's, that's my motto, and you can tell your boss that too, because he can't fire me. Um, I am almost out of time. If anybody has any questions, I am around, but we can end now if you're happy with that.